Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Epic Future Space, where I try to talk in depth about rockets and spacecraft. In my last video, I talked about Bigelow Aerospace's beam module being installed onto the International Space Station. And today, I wanted to talk about the next big module that will be installed onto the Russian segment of the space station. Today is July 27th, 2016, so let's get into it. So a couple of years ago, NASA declared that the construction of the U.S. segment of the space station was complete. There are still a couple of small pieces of hardware that have yet to be installed and other pieces of really cool hardware that are unusable because pieces are still missing. <clears throat> As for the European and Japanese sections, they're essentially complete as well and might get a few additional upgrades over the years. But on the Russian segment, poor Russia. They had some pretty ambitious plans, but it's mainly been money or a lack thereof that has held back their construction ideas. And some of their plans have devolved too. For example, their science and power platform, which was going to be a kind of medium-ish module that would have several large solar panels to help power their segment of the space station. And since then, that has become two kind of medium-sized modules that would provide less power. And currently, they're only going to be using one of those modules. But there are two other other modules that are almost guaranteed to launch because they've been built already. So to explain what Russia is going to be launching next, we need to do a little bit of back history on how they got to this point. Let's go back to the beginning of the International Space Station. The very first piece, Zarya, is what's called an FGB module, or Functional Cargo Block, which is based off of the 70s era TKS spacecraft, which was used on the Salyut and Almaz programs. When Zarya was being built in the 90s by Khrunichev, they used several spare parts to build a backup module just in case anything went wrong with Zarya. And by the year 2000, when Zvezda had docked to the Zarya module, the backup was about 65% complete. So Russia decided to complete the construction of it and to launch it and add it to the International Space Station. Unfortunately, it's been an uphill battle ever since. First, Khrunichev and their partner Boeing had to compete with Energia and Spacehab, who were marketing a commercial module called Enterprise, which never materialized. Both teams wanted to dock their different modules to the nadir or bottom port of Zarya, and eventually the Khrunichev Boeing team sort of yielded and decided to have their module be docked to the Zvezda module instead of the Zarya module, freeing up that port for the Enterprise. When this plan to build the Enterprise module was essentially abandoned, Russia had to scramble for some sort of replacement, especially since NASA still owed them a ride on the space shuttle because they delivered Zarya for free. And I feel like I should explain how that deal even came about. So NASA owns the Zarya module, and they paid for the Zarya module because it was never intended to be a part of the space station. The Russian space agency and their primary contractor, Energia, did not want any Khrunichev modules of any kind to be a part of the space station. But a Khrunichev representative during the initial meetings between the Russian Space Agency and NASA on how to build the International Space Station proposed a plan to use one of these FGB blocks first as the first piece of the International Space Station. And that is what we call the Zarya module. Although the whole thing with this is that NASA's plan and Russia's plan on how to build the space station didn't align. And this Khrunichev proposal lined up a lot more with how NASA wanted to proceed with the construction plan. And even once NASA accepted that proposal, Russia didn't want anything to do with it. And they pretty much told Khrunichev to grow screw themselves and build it themselves, which they did, thanks to a $25 million contract from NASA. And that's how NASA ended up owning the Zarya module. And with this whole process of, of completing the module under a NASA contract, they were able to barter the deal of launching the Zarya for free on a proton rocket in exchange for launching one of their other modules on the space shuttle. The plan was to launch their science and power platform on the space shuttle. But after the 2005 Columbia disaster and the impending retirement of the space shuttle, 
Russia was in kind of a, a tight situation. They needed to put something or risk forfeiting their free ride on a space shuttle. When the Science and Power Platform, which is built by Energia, stopped being funded by the Russian government in 1998, work on it slowed down pretty considerably. And not before though, three test articles were made, inc including a portion that would represent the pressurized portion of the Science and Power Platform. And after this whole fiasco of not having the Enterprise module, needing to have some sort of replacement, what they did is they used that test article and outfitted it with several equipment and made it space worthy and they were able to launch it just in time on Space Shuttle Atlantis for STS-132 in 2010. Just in time before the Space Shuttle retirement. That module is RASVET, or the Mini Research Module Number 1. I'm going off on a lot of diversions here, so let's get back on track. FGB2, the Zarya backup. While that was still being constructed, its plan kind of changed and it became the new Universal Docking Module in 2001. But all the different hardware changes that were needed for that were just becoming too expensive. And in 2006, that idea was canceled, or rather, adjusted. FGB2 was then repurposed into the multi-purpose laboratory module and will be outfitted with external and internal experiment racks as well as a new European robotic arm and an automated airlock for payload deployments, kind of like CubeSats or something. And that's what this part sticking out is. Now keep in mind that this module has been under construction for over 20 years now and lots of problems have come up. Some hardware is just old and needs to be replaced and with all the different hardware changes and redesigns over the years there have been a lot of things that have had to either be removed or added on, or removed again and added back on. I mean just it's, it's been crazy for this whole thing so keep that in mind and the whole lack of funds that Russia has anyway. Once the plan was finally solidified in 2006 to make this the multi-purpose laboratory module, the original plan was to have it launched in 2009. And then that slips to 2011, and it just keeps slipping further and further back. In late 2012, however, assembly of the multi-purpose laboratory module was essentially complete, and Khrunichev shipped the module to Energia for electrical, environmental, and vacuum testing. And the module was christened NACA, which means science. During the testing, however, Energia discovered a leaking fuel valve and a contaminated propulsion system, and it would need some extensive cleaning and or replacement entirely. So in 2013, Energia shipped NACA back to Khrunichev for repairs. And during this time, the European Space Agency, and more specifically the Netherlands, pulled their funding from the project because they were contributing funds due to their involvement with their robotic arm. And with all these delays, they were not going to pay for all these delays, which left it up to the Russian government to pay for it themselves. And again, they're strapped for cash to begin with. Once Khrunichev got the module back, it estimated that it would take about a year and a half to complete the repairs, and it turned out that they would have to replace all of the fuel lines. Thankfully, the fuel tank tanks were not contaminated, but meanwhile the engines, the warranty on the engines had expired, so they had to replace all of those as well. Ugh. Fast forward to 2015 though, and as the Russian Space Agency was being restructured into a state-run corporation, it seemed that new upgrades were being installed onto the NACA module, and the Russians were even referring to it as MLM-U, or Multipurpose Laboratory Module upgraded. It's a bit of a mystery what these upgrades are, however, and I'm assuming it has something to do with the idea of detaching the NACA module to have it be one of the core modules of a new Russian space station once the International Space Station reaches the end of its lifespan, which right now has a death sentence of 2024. Now this year, once all of the upgrades are complete, and assuming that all of the contaminated fuel lines and engines have been replaced already, Khrunichev is going to be shipping the module to Baikonur Cosmodrome directly, instead of to Energia first. And at the Cosmodrome is where it would do all of its final testing and launch prep, instead of going to Energia. This is so that they would hopefully save time, so that it will stay on track for right now. Its current launch date is somewhere in December of 2017, so hopefully that's just a year and a half away. I'm really hoping. Once the NACA is finally launched and docked to the International Space Station, there are two more modules that are almost ready to be launched, and those will be docked to the NACA module themselves. And then all three of those new modules will be separated to form that new Russian space station I was talking about, and hopefully with the option to collaborate with other spacefaring nations as well. 
This video is getting kind of long though, so I think I'll end it here and in my next video I'll talk about those two other new modules and the different ideas for what the new Russian space station might be. So thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And please, tell me what you think about this NACA module and all of its delays. Are you suspicious that there might be some sabotage going on between the rivals Energia and Khrunichev? I kind of do. But then again, there's so much corruption and quality control problems going on in the entire Russian space industry that there could be a lot of different reasons why this was delayed. But what do you think? Why do you think it's been delayed so much? Do you think that there's other reasons? Or do you take this story at face value? Also, the Russian segment of the space station has a pretty dramatic story. This is just a small part of it that I've talked about today. And just the whole Russian space program in general. I could talk about it for weeks, months even. So if you guys want me to give more details about their very interesting story, let me know. Also, I'm now on Patreon, and we're almost halfway to my first goal. Once we reach that goal, you'll get twice as many videos from me on this channel, and uh, I'm really excited about that. If you would like to support this show, please visit patreon.com slash epicfuturespace. Every single penny helps, and I just want to take a moment to thank my patrons, especially the new patrons. So first, we have one new bronze patron, Darren Polson. Thank you very much, and to all the other bronze patrons for contributing one dollar or more every month. For my silver patrons who are donating $2.50 or more per month, no new patrons, but Tim Dorsmagen, who was my first patron ever, bumped up his donation from bronze to silver. So thank you very much for that, Tim. For my gold patrons who are donating $5 or more per month, we have two new patrons, Evo Reitmare and Ricky Lake. So thank you so much to all of you guys. And finally, I have a new reward level, platinum. And my first platinum patron is Dr. L. Joseph Parker, MD. Platinum level starts at donating $10 or more every month, and Dr. Parker is donating $25 a month. Thank you so much. I'm still in such awe at your guys' generosity. I can hardly believe it. Just thank you so much to all of you. I hope I can keep making videos that you guys want to see. But anyway, thanks again for watching this video. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody. And don't forget, add Astra to the stars.